I'm going to be doing a commentary on my vows to my wife and kind of just showing how God is working through these vows and just a way of opening up and making sure that um, I've let the Holy Spirit take control of every uh, every place uh, in in the new vows that God has given me um, to my wife, Kaylin. So dedicated to my beloved Kaylin Michelle Funk from Gideon Funk, written on March 23rd, 2019. I wrote this at Cape and Ray with the help of Sony, um, a teacher down there, and um, I have that session recorded as well. But um, in walking through writing these vows, which was really beautiful. One, for Kaylin, I vow to seek God in all things in our marriage and all things in life. He is our refuge, our strength, our rock. John sixteen thirty three. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Um, so this last year, I vow to seek God in all things in our marriage and all things in life. Um, I, I followed God's leading, and he said that he would pay and take care of um, uh, Bible school, and that I'd be serving for summer camp, which was Cape and Ray. I watched both those things come true, and God told me to give... Um, my money and possessions to my wife, which I did, which meant that I was trusting God with what little I had. And then um, when it came to gifts or sending items, I quite often didn't have money. So I prayed to the Lord, God, if you want me to send this gift uh, for an anniversary or holiday or whatever, um, I said, God, you'll have to provide the money. And then the money would show up and uh, without even talking to anybody about that money. So God, God was able to take care of all my needs and provide for my bills, he said that he would cover my bills, and I've seen my bills just paid up, and uh, which is perfect timing um, for the uh, divorce papers that were given, um, because I wanted to give my wife everything and leave her no debt. Um, so this is God working in my life and being obedient and studying forty-four to sixty-six books of the Bible in a matter of six months, and uh, I will be going back again um, for second year. In, uh, in letting God do all things in our life and in our marriage. I pray for uh, Kaylin daily and uh, spend many, many hours writing and um, uh, videoing and recording uh, testimonies of what the Lord is doing in and through our marriage. And there's, there's only so much because I can only see one side, right? And the Holy Spirit sees the other side. So I'm just tending to Kaylin during this time. <coughs> Two... For Kaylin, I'll tend to you when you are sick, build you up when you are low. I'll stand by you through the tough times. Uh, faithfulness is what God has given me. So I'm still wearing my wedding ring uh, for a whole year of not having contact with my wife, uh, uh, physical or verbal contact. And uh, so I've seen God heal in me. So he's, he's healed me and uh, he stood with me while I'm low. And I guess standing with Kaylin and building her up when she's low is, is that prayer and dedicating it to the Lord and praying for her healing. Um, so God does a major work because God is real and God definitely does that. And I'll uh, stand by you through the tough times. Well, part of that here is not uh, committing any form of adultery. I haven't committed any adultery against Kaylin. I haven't fornicated with anyone. Um... I have had struggles in my past, and I dealt with gender identity and was cross-dressing in front of other women, um, and um, what else can I say? I was also being uh, playful. I, I went to uh, one of the lingerie shops, and all the staff, they I had them spank me with the spanker, which was just awful, just awful, and I thought I was just, you know, humoring other people. Hey, Google, cancel alarm. And um, being socialite and, you know, if a girl did this, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But I'm not a girl, right? And uh, I was fighting for gender rights and, and freedom and these sort of things. Um, if it was my wife and that was happening, I don't know. I would, I, from this point of view now, I would say that it's probably a, a little bit inappropriate, but I wouldn't be completely offended by it. But, uh, you know, her with a bunch of boys, yeah, I'd be offended, right? Um, I would say at that point, no, but God has been able to change my mind and my heart. So, um, standing through the tough times. So this is standing through the tough times, wearing my wedding ring, being faithful, and uh, fulfilling my vows to the Lord and to my wife. <clears throat> no matter what hard times we face, three, 
I vow to repent and seek forgiveness each and every day. I vow to let adversity strengthen us in love and care to our relationship as husband and wife, seeking to be strong in addressing my weaknesses. So, uh, my weaknesses, you know, uh, God's been able to heal a lot of what I would have deemed weaknesses like PTSD, um, emotional, uh, verbal and, uh, physical, um, abuse, even if it was only, uh, one or two times, um, for physical and then emotional, I've been emotionally abused probably the majority, if not, um, close to my entire life out of my family home. Um, I also suffered physical abuse and verbal abuse. And I think the verbal was, was the worst because it kept coming up again and again. And i um, so thankful that the Lord's healed me from PTSD. I don't have that anymore. It's completely gone. And uh, it used to feel like shudders through my skin. And now it's just nothing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And uh, I don't, uh, he's put me through those, those stresses and it's gone. God is so good. <clears throat> um, forgiveness every day for anything I've committed. Um God's brought me through each temptation, and I've, I've passed without um, cross-dressing. Uh, I haven't. Um, I did have one instance where uh, I went to look at uh, forced femination captions after, like, a whole year had gone, and I turned it off, like, right away because um, I didn't want to give in to that. And I said no in the name of Jesus, and I turned it off. And... Um, masturbation, um, six months without, and then it was hard. I was getting tempted, um, by thinking about other, other, uh, women. And, uh, and I said no to that. And my mom and God both said, you know, um, do it with your wife in mind. I had to retrain my mind how to think and to not, um, so that I wouldn't be tempted. And, uh, that was a difficult one. And I looked at the Bible verses for that, and um, it's hard to uh, to think of someone who hates you, um, and to be committed to them, and um, be untouched for so long. And um, I couldn't find any Bible verses specifically on that against that. It's personal desire, and I, you know, fulfilling a personal desire. I don't know if it was my desire. A lot of times I didn't want to do it, but I did it, and it it solved the problem, but yeah, I'm sorry for any of these things if I've misunderstood, and um, I vow to let adversity strengthen us. Well, hey Google, what is the definition of adversity? Here's the definition of adversity. Difficulties, misfortune. So, through difficulties and misfortune, um, strengthen us in love and care. Well, God is building up my heart in this time, and I believe he's going to do the same with you, Kaylin, to our relationship as husband and wife, seeking to be strong and addressing my weaknesses. Um, so I'm trying to think what my weaknesses are. God's actually been, been, uh, building a lot of strength inside of me. Um, my weaknesses. Oh, my weaknesses. Um, connection with, with friends and family as opposed to isolation. Uh, the Bible says that prophets suffer isolation and uh, um, uh, rejection and these sort of things. And a prophet is accepted anywhere except his hometown. So um, I've definitely faced that. And uh, it'd be nice to um, get along with my uh, brothers and sisters, but they are being puppeteered by works of the enemy. And... Um, and we can't be possessed by the enemy, um, as far as I understand it scripturally, but we can be oppressed. And the quickest way to explain that is God did not give us a spirit of fear, which is pneuma, a person of, you know, Holy Spirit, pneuma, breath. Um, we also have a spirit, pneuma. And if God did not give us um, the person of fear, if it's not from God, it's not from us, then it has to be an unclean uh, spirit. And how many Christians do you know that deal with fear? So... There you have it, uh, oppression of, of, a, of a person of fear on people of God. And uh, so how many other unclean spirits, right? There's many, um, but God possesses us. And I was just reading that in Judges, 
Judges 6, I think, with Gideon, um, when he goes out to make a proclamation and calls all the army together, you know, and they, they, they hither. And anyways, he's, pos- he's possessed by the Holy Spirit at that moment when he makes that proclamation. And that's why so many people come. Um, so, addressing my weaknesses. I vow to be courageous and honest even when the truth is hard. In love and care to our relationship as husband and wife and seeking strong and dressing my weaknesses. So I continue to do this through the writing, through the videos, through sharing the testimony, um, through opening up. Um, because a lot of this has been a one-sided story and I haven't shared my, my part. Mostly because when I was a kid, I would get blamed for a lot of things from either my parents or my brothers. Whether I did them or, or I didn't do them. And uh, I was used to being blamed even when I said I didn't do it, right? And so I started to just take that. And uh, quite often, you know, I get blamed and then I just, I don't say anything, I just take it. Um, Which isn't necessarily the right thing to do. And uh, Kaylin's truth isn't the absolute truth, and neither is my truth the absolute truth. The truth is literally in the center between both of us. Um, We paint only a portion of the picture, each one of us. Um, and then to put God's word uh, over over that all, then you get the ultimate truth, because what is Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life? There you go. Um, I vow to face new decisions as a team. You are my best friend. I vow to listen to you and learn from you. Well, um, that's going to be hard to do with, the, with the, res- the legal restraints put around me. But God did ask me, before any of this happened, if there was legal restraints, and he commanded me to do something, because I've always said that, God's law is above man's law, and uh, if he commands it, then I must do it. And he asked me if there was ever restraints put around me like that. If he commanded me to do something, would I do it? And I said, yes, Lord, because you are my God and my king at any cost, at any price, even jail. And so, um, yeah, but as as far as that goes, unless God commands me um, at this point um, to make decision as a team, you are my best friend. Um, I, I will do my best to, to be patient on a lot of things. Um, yeah, cause my body is not my own. It belongs to God, the father first, and then to my wife second. And, uh, man's law is not final, but God's law is. Um, six, I vow to value our differences just as much as our common ground. Um, God did not make men and women inferior, but different. And, uh, we are both, um, uh, we are both valuable to him, um, And so those differences make us unique. And um, so we have differences already by gender, by sex, by personhood, by personality, um, Enneagrams and such. And I value our differences. I prayed for iron sharpens iron. And uh, you can definitely tell that I am in a refiner's fire uh, right now. And it's hard and it's difficult. And um, serving our Lord may even go to our very lives. Um... So what does the Bible say? It says the enemy can, the worst he can do is take away our flesh, but have fear. So don't have fear of the enemy, but have fear of the one who can not only take away your flesh, but cast your soul into eternal darkness. So fear God. Um, I vow that I will safeguard and hold dear deep in my heart our union with God. Let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous Hebrews. So I'm avoiding um, adulterousness, even thoughts, taking every thought obedient to to Christ the King. Um, It's not the devil's playground, it's the Lord's playground. And um, marriage bed be undefiled. No one sleeps in my bed. (laughs) Um, I don't sleep in anyone else's bed. Uh, I guess Chris gave me a bed, but... What I'm saying is that um, I am committed to the Lord my God and to my to my wife and to my vows, and according to uh, the Beatitudes, um, right after the the uh, the telling of the divorce, it says that you must keep your your vows to the Lord first, um, and then it says in Numbers regarding vows that no matter divorce or anything, you are to still keep your vows, and uh, so that's what I'm called to do. Um, he's actually speaking specifically at wives at that point. In number is what I'm applying it to myself because in Beatitudes, it does not speak to a gender. Um, I promise to love you faithfully, forsaking all others through the good times and the bad, sickness and health, uh, regardless of where life takes us. Um, This is in our original vows as well. And um, so we are in bad times and 
uh, through time of sickness uh, as well. Sin is regarded as sickness, and uh, acting apart from the Father's uh, will is the term sin, archery, missing the mark. And who's the mark? God is the mark. So that means his timing, his way. And so I am doing my best to be fully obedient into listening to the Lord. And uh, I went to go speak to pastor today um, at the Anglican church. And uh, she recognized how vastly I'm hearing the Lord. The Holy Spirit came over her um, in confirmation of a lot of the testimony that I, I shared with her of God's work in me and confirm that. And um, this isn't the first time. It's happened again and again and again uh, with spiritual leaders. And so God is working a mighty work, um, and he is sovereign over all, and his fingerprints are over my entire life. And that means uh, that I may very well suffer as Christ has suffered, because I, I prayed for that, and God said, I'll only get a taste. Um, I promise to love you faithfully, forsaking all others, through good times and the bad, through sickness and health. So I forsaked all others and love you faithfully. I've been faithful this entire year and continuing to be faithful. I desire to know you, Kaylin, and fulfill God's desire in us. Um, so I'm desiring to know you, um, but I have to wait till God brings you to me. Um, I will not uh, go ahead before the Lord. I'll let the Lord do his work. And uh, in Genesis, he brought the woman to the man. So God gets to do that. If there's real God, he will do that. I don't, I don't need to do that. And God also doesn't force love either. He lets it be a choice. A choice with consequence, mind you. Um, hell is an awful consequence, but um, he knocks, he sits, he, he sits and knocks at the door, right? And then even goes to the church, is a definition reading of that. Um, promise to be available to my responsibility as a husband. Yes keeping responsible to that, um, but I have to be obedient to the Lord first in that as well. I promise to treat you with the love of God because we are a team now and for always. We are a team, and as long as there is hope, um, the marriage is not dead, um, and so I continue to walk with hope. And uh, it's you, me, and God, Galen. So uh, we are we are the three team, um, three musketeers. I don't know how you want to put that. Um even the even if it's just two out of the three, um, God has called me to be patient, um, patient, uh, enduring, and persevering. Those three, according to the will of God and my desire, I take you, my wife, leaving my father, and mother, and cleave to you. Genesis two twenty four. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Um, you are the other half of my flesh, and uh, God brought you as an answer to prayer. And so I know you are what he commanded me to, to pursue. And pursue with love means not to chase. So I need to be fully obedient. And if that means, uh, um, God says it does not mean being silent. Um, but if, I, if, if it is God's will for me to hold back and, and no longer said anything or say anything, then I will do that. And if he commands me to do that, even with consequence, <laughs> then I will do that. And 12, all that is mine is yours. I... I give you my hand, my heart, my love, for as long as we both shall live. I'm still alive, and um, and I've given you everything. And uh, God has provided everything of my needs. So I will continue to trust him and watch him provide, and continue to watch prophecies be fulfilled. And uh, I will wait till the day that God brings you home. It's not my job to bring you home. God will bring you home. Just as he brought the prodigal son, and bring my prodigal wife home. Um, only through love. So I'll just stand with my arms open wide, and... Um, not chase. <laughs> I really don't want to chase because that's, uh, that's failing to do my job as a husband, but pursue. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that uh, this does not go on deaf ears, and I pray that we, this is spoken through the heart of God and is listened through the, um, through the heart of God as well for anyone who hears or watches, um, also sees through the heart of God. Because when we uh, use the heart, we hear a different message than if we just uh, use our noggin. Um, two different messages, and I've learned it's very powerful to use uh, use the heart. Understand where a person's coming from. God, do a great and mighty work with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Yahoo Yeshua. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.